All right, hey, uh, actually, let's get straight to the topic. You are like a really rare animal in Finland. I mean, there's not too many science entrepreneurs in this country. And, and you are a second time biotech entrepreneur. And, and on top of that, everybody I talk to, they say that you are an excellent in writing publications and, you know, publishing in, in academic circles. So why is that, you know, why did you give you, you know, soul to the devil, so to the commercial side? <laughs> Well, Timo, uh, to me, um, s starting a business was a way uh, to be able to use our, uh, our drugs in patients. So uh, it's one thing to do research in the lab, uh, but as a human doctor interested in treating humans, you know, it was important for me to be able to uh, go all the way to patients and you know, basically uh, s setting up a company or companies uh, you know, was the tool to uh, be able to achieve that. And, you know, maybe 20 years ago it was possible uh, to do academic trials, uh, meaning that you can work at the university and have an idea, uh, maybe even produce a, a drug and, and go and do a trial. Uh, but nowadays, at least in Europe, you know, uh, you know uh, starting, up a, starting up a company is the only way to do that. Yeah, so, so just that you understand in the audience, so Axel uh, has developed roughly like dozen oncolytic viruses in a lab and, and then he personally took those viruses into patients under the Helsinki Act in the kind of advanced therapeutic access program. So kind of that's very unique, right? So has any, anybody done that before? And, well, and tell me about, I mean, it's a vast amount of data that you and understanding that you have. Yeah, yeah. So oncolytic viruses, uh, they're a, a pretty unique sort of therapy because uh, you know, the way the therapy works is uh, that uh, a virus can replicate in a cell and the last stage is it kills the cell and uh, up to 100,000 virions can then be released into the surrounding tissue. And this is sort of an advanced therapy and in, in Europe uh, there's this European dire directive encouraging uh, scientists and uh, companies to, um, you know, uh, do personalized treatment with uh, these sort of advanced therapies. So we uh, uniquely uh, took advantage of that yeah. and we treated 290 patients in an experimental therapy uh, program. And, yeah. and, and to answer your question, you know, I don't think anybody else in the world has done that. Yeah. Uh, so it was uh, a really uh, exciting and uh, a useful time because we were able to really take the most recent advances in science and apply them to yeah. uh, care of so, patients. Yeah, so, so it, on average, as you know, it takes like, uh, like 14 years or so 15 years from like preclinical stage to the patient. So what is the shortest time from lab to patient that you have done with oncolytic viruses? <laughs> uh, 10 months. 10 months. So think about that. 10 months from lab to the patient. Right. So uh, that's pretty fast. So and I would even say that uh, anything above 10 months uh, is due to bureaucracy. Yeah. And, uh, so it's, it's not, the, uh, not the science, not the production or, or anything like, like that slowing down the process. Yeah. It's something completely yeah. else. So, uh, so you are one of the world's top in oncolytic viruses, which is, belongs to the immunotherapies in, in oncology. Can you tell in like 30 seconds uh, why do you believe that this is the strategy that will cure cancer? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, eventually, uh, all, all of the approaches we need, uh, um, all of the approaches we have for treating cancer will be used because uh, advanced metastatic cancer is difficult to cure. But this is a completely untapped area of oncology is, is, uh, is uh, uh, taking advantage of the immune system's ability to recognize and kill tumor cells. And, uh, you know, in oncology in the past couple of years, the, uh, um, you know, immunotherapy has sort of made a b breakthrough, but the, the drugs we have uh, available now are, are do, do not actually create any new form of immunotherapy. They just uh, sort of release the, uh, uh, you know, the immunological breaks that the tumor has uh, um, uh, engineered into the uh, immune system, uh, while the uh, oncolytic viruses can actually generate new immunity against the tumor cells. And uh, these are really, really well tolerated agents, uh, which can be easily be combined with checkpoint inhibiting antibodies or, or chemotherapy. Yeah. And it's, it's like, uh, uh, it, you know, it sounds a bit of a, a science fiction 
project, but it's actually really easy to generate any type of virus you want to generate. I mean, uh, you can arm the viruses with whichever transgene you think is most useful uh, to, to really uh, uh, optimize the immunological effects. Uh, so you're the arming the viruses, so you're kind of giving them weapons, right? Yeah, yeah. And weapons against what? So against cancer cells? Yeah. So. Um, an oncolytic virus means a virus which can no longer replicate in normal cells, but it can still replicate in tumor cells. Yeah. So, so one aspect of the therapy is that it can directly lyse or uh, kill the, the, the tumor cell. Uh, and, the, uh, and the beauty of the approach is that uh, there's tremendous local amplification and the immune system recognizes the virus as bad. Yeah. Uh, and, and therefore you get also uh, you know, recognition of the tumor as yeah. bad. But this, uh, uh, you know, you can optimize this further by, by arming the viruses. I mean, you know, like an, like an airplane can be armed with uh, missiles to make it a fighter, or a drone can be armed yeah. with a you know, missile to make it uh, a, a, an even more dangerous tool. Uh, also, viruses can be armed, uh, you know, with immunostimulatory molecules that can really optimize the anti-cancer yeah. immune effect. And, and, and the interesting thing is that even after the arming of the viruses, they are like really safe and tolerable for humans. So with this kind of uh, program that you have done that then led to the founding of Onkos Therapeutics, your first company, you have been always like pushing the boundaries. So can you tell something? You, you even wrote a book about that. So how uh, sometimes uh, the science takes too long to get to the patient. So yeah. you had really difficult time yourself personally. Uh, maybe you just a few words about that. Yeah, it's sure that I uh, I did write the book about it, and it's uh, you, know, you can easily find it by just googling with Axel Hemminki book. Uh, uh, it's um, there are tremendous uh, possibilities in science and how science could be helping patients, including uh, cancer patients. And you know this advanced therapy directive that the EU wrote. I, I mean, you know, I, to me, it's one of the few uh, good. Uh, uh, passages of legislation passed by the uh, by the European Community, and we took full advantage of it. We we actually uh, threw ourselves into really thinking how we could be using oncolytic viruses uh, in helping patients. And we used uh, we went uh, we treated patients. We learned something for every patient. We came back to the lab. We designed a new virus. We we used a, a total of ten different viruses. Yeah. In, uh, in in treating patients, and it seemed to work in a high percentage of the patients, and therefore it uh, be became uh, imperative to uh, uh, convert this also into a drug development project. Yeah. And that's why I founded Oncos Therapeutics in 2008. Yeah. And, and Oncos then uh, you know, uh, took the patient treatments and converted that into a traditional uh, drug uh, development project. Yeah. And they did a phase one trial, actually the first phase one. Yeah. Uh, uh, oncolytic virus trial done in, in Northern Europe, and, and they, um, they recently merged with Targovax, a, a Norwegian company. Yeah. You know, I think that's a really important step uh, f for them to, to go forward into uh, yeah. f phase two so trials. Tell me, so tell me about that. So the first company who founded uh, Oncos Therapeutics uh, went into phase one, and, uh, and, and then it merged with the Norwegian company Targovax. And, and which is now going public uh, as we speak in the Norwegian stock exchange. Is that what you wanted as an entrepreneur? So is this a good end kind of a result for your first journey? Yeah. Well, you know, for Onkos, I think that's a really important step because, you know, uh, you know they needed to uh, be funded and they needed to partner with a, a larger organization to be able to uh, take the really promising phase one results forward. Um, I mean, to me personally, you know, back in 2008, you know, I wasn't really company-oriented. I was uh, a clinician and a scientist first and foremost. And you know, um, and you know, when Onkos was getting going, you know, I didn't always agree with the decisions yeah. that were being made there. And so that's not very uncommon for founders to <laughs> disagree with the decisions <laughs> yeah. that other people make in, in one's company. So, <laughs> but I see that as a as a really uh, important sort of lesson learned that and. You know, with my second company, in a way, I'm I'm testing my uh, my own vision in the sense that in the in the first company, I was just you know trying to advise, and you know I you know I, I didn't always agree with all the decisions, but but uh, you know now I'm I'm thinking that uh, you know you know I 
you know, I want to see if my ideas are, are correct, and that's what I'm trying to do with the, the second company. Yeah. So when we first met uh, in 2009, when we, when we had a chance to put a little bit of money from Lifeline into Onkos, uh, you said that you want to cure cancer, which is a tall order. Uh, do you still believe you can do it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, that has been like fascinating to look at you working because I kind of feel that that has been your driving motivation. Uh, you know, go through everything, uh, all the obstacles found in the company and, and, and all that. And uh, now you are at Tilt Biotherapeutics, which you set up a couple of years ago. So what is Tilt about? Is it an oncolytic virus company or...? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Tilt is a, a company based fully on human observations. Yeah. So, so when I was treating uh, these patients uh, who had advanced cancer, when I was treating them with oncolytic uh, adenoviruses, you know, if I learned one thing, it was that there's a tremendous immunological effect that the virus causes yeah. in the tumors. And when we looked deeper into it, we realized that it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's an effect uh, where T cells, so... T cells are a class of, uh, you know, um, immunological cells which can, uh, you know, which can be useful in controlling cancer. And the uh, and the apple dropped on my head. I realized yeah. that uh, oncolytic adenomyosis is actually causing the exact effects which have been a problem in T cell therapy. So, yeah. so T cell therapy is right now it's working really wonderfully in certain uh, rare leukemias. I mean, yeah. patients, kids with leukemia are being cured with T cell therapy, yeah. but it does not work in, uh, in the more s uh, common uh, forms of tumors, uh, such as solid tumors. Yeah, which is 90% of all cancer, exactly. right? Exactly. But, you know, with my own eyes and then with the microscope, you know, the smart scientists in the lab were able to confirm this with a microscope that, you know, the oncolytic adenomyosis causes the exact effects which uh, should make a T cell therapy of solid tumors work. Yeah, all right. So, so what you are trying to do is, is really enabling 90% of cancers to be treatable with T-cell therapy. Exactly. Right, yeah. So, uh, I've been, uh, obviously, with my current job as, as, as Lifeline, trying to find like good science entrepreneurs from universities in Finland. And I always kind of forget this obstacle that people think that they want to do science and they want to do publications, but they don't want to do companies. So, is that true and is it changing? So, is it in a way that you are kind of an odd guy in the in the university corridors if you want to do some want to you know put the company together or uh, I mean is there an atmosphere against the companies or pro companies yeah. in a Finnish like medical schools yeah I would claim that the situation the environment has changed rapidly yeah. uh, in the past uh, five uh, or ten years that's that good news when I uh, you know started my re research career you know company, setting up a company was see, seen as a sort of a corruptive uh, uh, activity, you know, the, the commercial aspect can uh, corrupt pure science. Yeah. But nowadays uh, it's, it's encouraged uh, a lot and, you know, we have uh, some good uh, leadership at the University of Helsinki at the medical faculty. Yeah. You know, the dean is very uh, uh, understanding of, uh, you know, the importance of companies and, you know, uh, and Finland is not doing great economically right now, uh, and it's it's uh, increasingly ad admitted that actually companies are a great way to, uh, you know, get funding and yeah. employ people. Uh, and uh, you know, the way I see it is that if Finland is great in something, I mean, we don't have Nokia mobile phones anymore. That's but right. Need to do something. But else. we have the best computer games in the world, yeah. thanks to Ilka Panen and the colleagues, thank you Supercell, and I would claim that we have the best oncolytic viruses in yeah, the world. Yeah, that's actually right, <laughs> people don't know about it. Hey, we have 50 seconds left, uh, and now comes the stock question, so uh, what is your biggest advice for a, for a scientist who wants to set up a company? You have experience from two right now, Yeah. so the one piece of advice that no one should forget. Yeah. Uh, take a personal interest. So if you, if you want to make it happen, you cannot count on somebody else doing it for you. You need to take a personal interest. Yeah, so trust yourself yes. and become an entrepreneur, right? Exactly. All right, so let's have an applause for Axelian. Wish good luck for the next endeavors.